in the darkest blackness of human carnage and suffering. Police, fire, and EMS intercede on behalf of mankind. God himself reaches out to those who suffer through their hands. Their service is a clear and unmistakable demonstration that God does not abandon people in the storms of life. Well, welcome, everybody, and uh, we're glad to uh, be with you again for this next episode of the Ogle County Peer Support Network. Uh, we are thrilled and excited to introduce our guest, General Stephen P. Huber. Uh, he is, um, I consider, a personal friend, uh, as well as an amazing uh, brother in the Lord. Um, I want to say welcome to you, General, and, and thank you for, for being here. Yeah, thank you. It's an honor to be here. Boy, I'll tell you what, we, um, we are thrilled. I mean, first of all, just to, you know, I mean, I, I remember that when I first got to know you and people would, would refer to you as your first name, and I, I said, now, who are we talking about? They said, you know, Steve. I said, Steve who? And I said, well, you guys are calling him by his first name. He's a general. You don't call him by his first name. So I lovingly started referring to you as Brother Sir. Because I just couldn't bring myself yeah. to just tell everybody, Steve, 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 you know. Right, right. Um, but um, we want to thank you also for uh, your service, and it's been extensive. Um, I was just going through your bio uh, online, and uh, I thought, my goodness, I got tired of reading everything. Um, so it's an amazing, you, you've been a busy man, and you are still a busy guy, uh, and you do sit on the Ogle County Board as well. But um, I want to thank you also for, for modeling great leadership uh, and I've watched and I've observed and I and I knew um, I can always recognize a good leader and I always thought if I had to serve I would want to serve unto you um, and that's how much I think of you but uh, rather than me try to remember things about uh, from your bio could you just tell us a little about yourself sure first uh, thank you for the kind words and it, it, as I said already it's an honor to be here it has always been a pleasure to work with you the two of you, uh, on various projects. Um, so I'm, I'm ha very happy and, and glad to be able to, to contribute to this effort. Uh, as far as myself, hey, I'm just a regular guy, uh, um, but I, I, you know, I served 33 years Army, both an active reserve status. Um, I am retired Brigadier General. Um, since retirement, well, I have two deployments under me. I've been to Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, uh, since retiring in 2012, uh, I have been working as a military trainer for Department of Defense. So for the last 12 years, we go out, uh, the program I work for supports uh, major training exercises throughout the, the country. Uh, it's been great. It allows me to stay connected, working with soldiers, who I love to do, and, um, and it's been very good. Uh, the other part of me is uh, I live here in Byron, as you mentioned. Uh, I'm on the county board. Uh, my wife, Rhonda, uh, and my son, Matthew, who's in firm con control of the house, <laughs> as you as you <laughs> on that works. But, I have understood. Uh, I have two older daughters that they, they live out of state. Mm. That's me. So a family man and, and also a great man of faith yes, as well. Very and, much. And a man of service and, and uh, commitment. Um, and, you know, um, I, before we get into the discussion, uh, something that had, had caught my eye, and I, I knew that your call sign uh, is Phoenix 6, and in the logo of the Ogle County Peer Support Team, we have a Phoenix featured right in the center of our logo. Right. And I just thought maybe you could just comment a little bit on, on Phoenix. Yeah, as we were talking earlier, uh, you know, Phoenix rising out of the ashes is where that, that comes from. And in Afghanistan, my call sign was Phoenix 6. 6 is usually the commander. Um, ours was Combined Joint Task Force Phoenix, so I became Phoenix 6. Now, our task force was charged with rebuilding capacity and capability of the Afghan National Security Forces, which included uh, not only the Army, but the police as well. So we had mentor teams and embedded training teams spread out all over Afghanistan, uh, embedded with their various forces uh, to build this capacity, mm -hmm. everything from equipment to procedures to, to uh, technical training itself. Right, right. So that's where the phoenix on yeah. our part, or my part, comes from. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and we're just, um, you know, in keeping with that theme, even rising, the phoenix rising from the ashes, um, you know, life has a way to, to take its toll on us. And then, of course, for those who serve in a first responder capacity. Now, our phoenix bird is multicolored. It has the colors that would represent police, fire, EMS, yes. uh, also corrections and dispatch. Um, so not only not only do we have to navigate through the pressures of life, but then the pressures of the job, of the responsibility. And uh, in, in an effort to, to help keep employees healthy, now when I say employee health, I'm referencing uh, the physical, um, the emotional, and the spiritual aspect. Um, so, so we have a, a chaplain here at the sheriff's office. And by the way, this is the post one recording studio. And, and this is where we're sitting right now. Um, we have an official chaplain, department chaplain, and we have an official peer support team, right. which is a resource for the employees, for their families, right. and then also for first responders throughout our county. Um, and so it is really, really important for people to understand why we're here and what we're trying to do. Um, you know, we, we throw around words like, uh, you know, emotional um, or behavioral health. Uh, we talk about resiliency. We talk about all these things. But, th but the bottom line is um, our existence, the chaplain, the peer support team, um, we're here to help keep people balanced and centered I guess for lack of a better way of looking at it, I know uh, in our conversations and in the years that we've known each other, uh, and by the way, when I first met you, you were a major, uh, then you went to, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was a few years ago. Yep. Um, but I know that we've talked about the importance of the chaplaincy. Absolutely. And so uh, from your perspective. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the chaplain corps, and not every commander out there understands the the utility of the of, of having a chaplain and what they can bring to uh, the effort. And we uh, sometimes refer to them as force multipliers or you, sometimes a term of combat multipliers, but it, it's not just combat. It's all oper military operations where chaplains can p play a huge role. So a chaplain is a member of a commander's staff reports directly to the commander. He's on his personal staff, uh, along with the, like JAG and mm -hmm. um, an IG, things like that. They don't go through the chief staff. They, direct, they directly report to the, the head guy, right? The, in this right. case, uh, the commander. And so overseas, I had uh, chaplains in this task force. I had a task force chaplain and then several spread out across uh, where our people were to... Uh, <clears throat> it was not only a chaplain, it was a whole unit ministry team, which I believe is similar right. to your teams that you right. build here. Um, so a unit ministry team is the chaplain, a chaplain assistant, which is um, <clears throat> he helps the chaplain uh, doing all things, plus he's his protection. Mm -hmm. And then a commander has the opportunity to assign uh, additional personnel that want to volunteer for that effort. Uh, that could help, and those would be the, the peers that, that you're referring to. Uh, they minister the, for the spiritual health and morale and welfare of all soldiers that are under them, uh, all soldiers, not just uh, the soldiers of their particular faith. Right. Because, uh, I mean, even our founders understood we have a pluralistic society. Uh, there are many religious beliefs within our society, and a commander is charged in accommodating all of them. And you're, as a commander, responsible for the health, welfare, uh, which includes spiritual health, right. of everybody, even those that don't believe in, in, in a you know, faith or a spirit, yeah. spiritual uh, life. Uh, you're still responsible for them. And the chaplain takes on their role and, and still ministers to that person. They may not minister the faith, but they help then direct them and get them the assistance that that individual needs, depending on what the situation is uh, and what those needs are. Yeah. So we, we promote and, and we teach that the chaplain and the peer support team is a resource. Yeah, it is a resource. It, it pretty much a chaplain needs to have his finger on the pulse of the command. Mm. 
uh, know what's going on. He has direct access. People will come and talk to a chaplain, whereas they may not go to the sergeant major, right. or they may, certainly may not go to the, the commander, uh, but they'll talk to a chaplain. Yeah. yeah. There's others there's yeah. That, that, yeah. that fit that need, too, but certainly they understand that a chaplain, uh, you know, there's that silence that they cannot relate. Uh, I forget the term of that, but uh, they're obligated not to repeat. Confidentiality. Confidentiality, yeah. much like a, a medical right. uh, a doctor. Mm -hmm. And so people understand that, and they feel more comfortable sometimes talking to a chaplain. And sometimes even if it's not the same faith, but they understand that the role of the chaplain is to, to help, and to help that individual, help me uh, get through whatever it is I'm trying to do. Uh, and then guide me in the right right direction to yeah. you know, mental health, whatever, right. whatever it may be. Yeah, so, yeah. And one of the big things is suicide prevention. So sometimes just talking to someone can really mitigate those ideations. Yeah. Half the battle is just showing up. And you use the word ministry of presence. Right, right. You have to. You can't minister to people. You can't help people by when you're absent. Right. But by not being there. And so your the role of the chaplain is to be on the ground, visible, approachable, and, and uh, be able to uh, effectively minister to to the people of, yeah. of the command or the department in this case, the sheriff's department. Right, right. Yeah, and, and that's so vitally important and, and, and that ministry of presence where, you know, oftentimes and in, in what some as I'm filling out my reports, uh, you know, I'll say something to the effect of provided presence. Uh, well, what does that mean? Well, I was there. It means yeah. I, I provided yeah. presence and you go from there. Sometimes you're just your physical presence without anyone even talking to you makes a big difference. Right. There's comfort in knowing that your leadership cares about you. That's okay. right. So the fire, in case fire, here's a sheriff department. If the sheriff is visible or the fire chief is visible, that brings a level of comfort and confidence to everyone on the scene. From firefighters to victims, they understand that right. there's, hey, there's at least someone here that I can go talk to that cares about me. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And that's that's a big thing, um, especially when people are going through something. And, uh, you know, now you know, we, we uh, the rule of thumb for us is, is this, that first and foremost, um, I am here for the employees and their families. Right. And that care extends to the members of the community. Sure. Um, but at any time, and, and Chief Lewis uh, can comment on this as well, the confidentiality is is a i mean that's everything if you that's a non-negotiable non-negotiable yeah that's it right. is and in fact you can get a lot of trouble if you yeah. if you violate that yeah so when a chaplain and a commander are talking you know a lot of details are left out but the the basic picture is painted to the commander who would otherwise be unaware of what's going on uh you don't have to know the details it's like you know, a doctor, you don't have to know all the little details. You just got to know someone is sick yeah, or someone needs attention. Right. And then the commander can, can react because you can't act on something you don't know about. You really can't. I think it, it works for all the way through the system. And when you were first talking about that, the presence, it kind of reminded me of a fire uh, near the end of my career. Um, a fellow fire chief was on the golf course golfing, and he called into our fire station and said, hey, I don't know if you're aware, but there's a big black header north of town. And about that time, the calls started coming in. And on my arrival, uh, it's it was probably about a quarter mile back lane. And about halfway down, I could no longer see. I was in thick black smoke already. So I had to drive off into the hayfield there to get around. And as I'm driving around the scene, I'm starting to count the buildings. Well, I got about 100 hay bales on fire, those big oh, ones. Yeah. And I have one, two, and I got up to seven with a house that I seen that the wood pile next to the house had caught fire because everything, all the brands and everything were heading that direction. Plus an LP tank in the middle of it that it had yep. just uh, let off its first time of... Uh, relieving the pressure in the tank, and it was right next to a fully involved barn. 
So it, it, uh, it was a significant scene. Mm -hmm. And I can remember working out of the back of the buggy there, had everything going, had my water supply, we went to a fifth alarm, mm -hmm. and et cetera. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I mean, I'm, you know, you get tense in those moments and, and you're, you're, your mind is traveling from, are my guys safe? What can I do to preserve as much property here? I have to write off some things, you know, and all of a sudden somebody's hand comes on my shoulder and I turn and it's him. And it's just like it made everything better. So the presence is very important for yep. incident commanders, for all up and down the troops that just that he never said a word, yep. just put his hand on my shoulder and I seen the smile and I thought, yep. okay, we've got this. Yeah, so that, presence that, that's an excellent, means a lot. Yeah, absolutely. That's an excellent story. And I can sort of tie that into my time in Afghanistan. I, as I mentioned, we were spread out all over at all these little teams, literally all over the country. And so I would go out and visit and I would bring along an entourage a, or a team, as right, you your right. term is, yep. Um and it included a chaplain. I mean, of course, I had my sergeant major with me. And, uh, and then I brought other folks that could help out and be a force multiplier, right, right. right? So I brought a JAG. I brought an admin person. I brought the IG because, you know, I embraced the IG. They're, they're there to really seek out issues within a, uh, a particular command or department. Um, and it was much appreciated. I don't know how many times I've had people to this day come up to me Hey, sir, you know, how you doing? Blah, 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 blah. I remember the time, you know, you, blah, 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 came visited, you know, our little team on such and such mountaintop, and uh, it, it made a huge impact. And I brought all those people. Chaplin was one of them. But all those people, because someone in that group needed something, yeah. whether to have an issue back at home that's been bothering them or the issue on the ground that they needed addressed, you know, chaplains can obviously tend to that spiritual part of all that because that's that's one of the first people they ran to when mm. we showed up. Not me. Uh -huh. You know, eventually, you know, I hey, sir, you know, how you doing? Yeah. But uh, it was guys like the chaplain uh, are the first people because they knew that they yeah. it was a non-threat person that they could talk to, you know, expose whatever it is that's going mm. on, open up about it, and and. You know, hopefully get somewhere because the chaplain then would tell me about it uh, or direct the individual to whatever resource we had within the command. Yeah. Uh, or outside the command even. You know. Yeah. So yeah. huge. Your your story really was, you know, they, they, they tie together that presence just showing up. Yeah. Made yeah. a huge difference in the lives and the morale of those, you know, 12 18 people that were stationed out there. Yeah, and, and that, that weighs heavy on me to to want to be available uh, as much as possible. Uh, you know, of course, yeah. I am a career pastor, uh, so I have the responsibility of a church, and family. You're one, and you're one guy. I'm, I'm one guy, yeah. and I haven't figured out how to clone me. Right. Um, you know, and, and I can remember on one particular uh, call, I, I went to the hospital, well, many calls, but went to the hospital, and then I called Chief Lewis and said, hey, yeah. can you report directly to the scene because we need presence there as well. So f from a command standpoint, how important is it then to to multiply your effectiveness, a force multiplier? Well, and you can't do it all alone. You, you, you have to have a team. We, we talked about ministry teams and you have this peer support team and that's the only way you're going right. to be able to address the multitude of things that are going to come at this right. department. You know, or yeah. The com my command. Yeah. There's just no other way you can you can do it. Um, and I think with the team concept too, like you'd yeah. mentioned, there was different ones within that team that others felt more comfortable. Yeah, with. absolutely. You know, maybe an, an older person or well, a younger there, person. Well, for a variety whatever. of reasons. I mean, yeah. the, the sergeant major obviously had his own. You know, because sergeants would come up to him because they you know, probably knew him uh, personally. Uh, and or from other commands or other other uh, assignments, and, and so you know they would talk. They don't you don't necessarily go talk to the sheriff right directly. 
you right. would seek out someone that you're more comfortable with, that you understand. Right. You know, certainly the chaplain would yeah. be one of them, uh, or anyone else on his team uh, that could provide that peer peer level talk and get the person to open up. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I maintain, and I say this, you know, um, jokingly, but but in all seriousness, not all chaplains are created equal. No. Uh, some chaplains believe that it is their job to proselytize and right. convert you. And it's like, well, well, no, that's not your job. Yeah. Uh, well, I can only effectively reach those within my own persuasion. Well, well no, you're there to serve all. Yeah. And now that, that looks different, yeah. would be different. Um, and you know, as a reason, that's why I like I like to define uh, really to the the resource uh, definition is, hey, how do I serve you? How do I help you? Yeah. What do you need? Can I get somebody for you? Yep. Because I'm not that guy, but I'm the guy to connect you to what you need. Uh, that's everybody. And that's the key point in what you have to have in your approach to that particular individual. So for me, um, I remember a young captain, this was in a training exercise, it was not, we weren't overseas yet. Uh, young captain, chaplain, hey, chaplain, how you doing? Blah, 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 we start talking. And he tells me, well, I'm, you know, I'm preparing my service and writing my, you know, my words or sermon or, or, or my, my remarks or whatever uh, word he used. And I said, oh, okay, so, and I started to ask him about things within the, the command. Now, he's captain level, so he's probably at a battalion, and he's still young. Usually it's a captain or, or higher or major. Yeah. So he's probably pretty young. And uh, I said, well, what about, well, I don't worry about them. I, I'm focused on, and he used the, hmm. you know, the religion that he, Right, that he right. was focused on. And I, I, I didn't say anything, but I did go to his boss and talk about it. And the guy said, yeah, he's, he's fairly new. He just doesn't get that concept that you described. Right. That when you're a chaplain, you're a chaplain of everybody. Right. right. You don't always have the opportunity to have the person of your faith. Right. right. So I'm Christian. Yeah. You know, I would yeah. you know, welcome you, yeah. and we could have a talk about uh, our faith. Uh but if I'm not Christian, I may we may not get into faith-based right. conversations. But you could help me out. You could get me to the right person. Or you could make that connection or that coordination to maybe a Catholic priest right. or maybe a rabbi, if, if that's you know the case. Um, whereas that that individual probably doesn't even know where to turn, right? And you you may even be the first chaplain that you've ever seen. You know, out on the battlefield or out at the, you know, the training center or wherever. So it's key to understand that you are the chaplain for everybody, even the non-believers, even the ones that don't have a faith. Right, right. And it's if you have the right approach to un, to to let them know that you're a resource, that you're not there to prosthesize and to convert or do anything else. Let's not talk about that. Right, Son right. Son or yeah, yeah. soldier. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about what your needs are. Oh, maybe I can get you some help. Maybe we can go over here and we can get, you know, whatever the case may be. You'll make, you'll make more headway than, than trying to stick to a particular script or, oh, yeah. or something, right? Yeah. And soldiers have to understand that, too, that, that when they see you walking up, you're not there to convert them. You're not there to necessarily even talk about uh, Christianity, for example, but you are there to listen to them and you know, shoulder to lean on and things like that. And so it's very important that a chaplain understands that you know it's everybody under the command or everyone under the department uh, that's under in their purview. So. Yeah, and really the the universal language um, that that we can speak uh, and will transcend all the dividing lines is just to be a man or a woman of compassion. Yep, that's a good word. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what people need, and 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 I have found uh, in in a time, some it gets confusing in our world. Um, and there was a time when when there was this big push to uh, for the chaplains to well, you don't want to touch people, you you, you don't want to do this, and especially during COVID, 
Uh, and I'm like, N but you don't understand. People need this. This is what they need. That That is true. And it's a thin line. You got to be very careful. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. even COVID or not or any of that other stuff, but uh, just sometimes putting a hand on someone can be taken the wrong way. Right. And then you're going down a road that yeah. you do not yeah. want to go down. Uh, See, so <clears throat> excuse me, you have to be extremely careful uh, on physical touch uh, unless it's, you know, welcomed or they understand. Like taking someone's hand to pray, right, right would right. Be, be one thing that you could do as a chaplain. Yeah. You're going to need permission to do that. You don't just right. go grab someone's hand because yeah. uh, particularly in, in, in today's uh, uh, environment, right, uh, right. that could be problematic. Well, and that's why the chaplain and peer support, we need the ability to read a situation. Yes. Um, you, you'll, you can tell right away. I mean, sure. when, when people are grieving or, and, and there's all kinds of trauma, I mean, I can't tell you through the years how many times, uh, especially just in a hospital setting or wherever right. it might be, somebody needs just an embrace because they, they're falling apart. And they need somebody just yep. to say, I'm here. Right. I'm here. I, right. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you through this dark valley. You're not going to have to walk through this alone. Right. I'm here with you. Um, so, you know, it does take a certain amount of, um, uh, you know, just the, the, the ability to read and, and to understand. Um, you know, through the years, we've had some people who have expressed an interest in doing what I do. Uh, all of those people have been weeded out just because they don't last. Um, and, and I don't say this for any other reason than just to tell you that I, I feel like it is a call. I've been doing this longer now than anybody else in our county. Uh, I am still active duty pastor. No, um, I mean, uh, I'm the old guy in the community. Um, senior. senior, senior, senior man. Senior. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but you have to know that th there is a calling to do this. And, and I believe just like a call to serve in the capacity as a commander, uh, as a fire chief, as the sheriff, or whoever it might be. Um, these, we take these roles very seriously and we want to protect the integrity as well. And so saying that to say this, there, there has to be accountability you know, a good old boy can may come. Hey, can I can I give you a hand with that? Well, no, it doesn't work that way. Our peer support team members are trained. They right, are right. nationally certified. Yeah. Um, this is very important, and and this is one of the things that we we uh, we advocate and promote is to have the the training. Um, you know, we can help provide that. Um, you know, and obviously, it's sometimes it's just a matter of of some practical. Uh, insights and sharing some wisdom. And, you know, you obviously uh, understand from your position uh, that chaplains can be so beneficial. However, a chaplain can be so detrimental uh, doing sure. the wrong thing, yeah. like anything, yeah, like, like a, anything you know, else. Yeah. Exactly right. You, so if you've had one bad experience, that doesn't mean you just throw the whole thing out. Right. You know, I've been to the dentist before and it hurt like heck, but I don't stop going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Or it'll really hurt. Yeah. 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 So, um, would you say, and I know the answer, but I'm asking you, chaplains have been, through the years, a big part of not only military history, sure. but our nation's history. Yes, right. They've always existed, even before we were a country, uh, in some form or other in different operations. But in the military, um, and they were around even before we were um, in the different capacities, but in uh, George Washington understood yeah. the, yeah. the the need for chaplains. Right, right. And so he brought them into the Continental Army early on uh, and created spots for them. Yeah. And, uh, and so, the, and it's evolved, obviously. Right, right. And the uniforms change, but the uh, the role, or at least the idea behind it, uh, has has not since since our founding. Yeah. Yeah. And, and admittedly so, I mean, there are some things that are going on now that are confusing for people and, you know, we, we just need a calming presence. We sure. need somebody just to keep the focus and, and good leadership does that right. stay uh, focused on the mission yeah. on, on the assignment. I am very, very um, pleased and grateful for the opportunity here because uh, you know, we're looking, we're looking to be a force multiplier. We're looking to keep people healthy, to be a resource. Right. Uh, and as it turns out here in our county, we've, we've had quite a bit happen lately. 
Um, and, you know, it's, it's no secret, uh, you know, I mean, things that are out in the pub, uh, public and that are open, uh, you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's been a, a very difficult trying time and I couldn't be more honored to be included in, in this process of, Hey, you know, can you go here or can you be there? Can you stay sure. with the family? Can yep. you, you know, so an administrator or a commander, um, what, what's the best way to educate yourself on, on this type of thing? I mean, do you just talk to another commander and say, Hey, uh, I see you use chaplains. Uh, can you tell, talk to me about that? Is that would you recommend that? C certainly, uh, that's yeah. one way. Yeah, um, yeah. But it is part of our education too. You know, as a an officer, even NCO, you have a series of education yeah. processes and schools that you go through throughout your career, and that's part of the curriculum. You know, the chaplaincy, just like anything else, intel, right, right. You know, all the different functions. And um, chaplains are certainly part of it. They're discussed. Uh, they are part of your command team. They should be involved in all of your planning processes to provide input as to the uh, health and welfare of the command itself. Uh, and then the, also the spiritual or religious environment that you're operating in. That's, that all falls under the guise of uh, your staff chaplain. Yeah. Your yeah. command chaplain. Um, you know, to educate, I mean, it, if you don't get it <laughs> in the schools, then, yeah, I mean, watching someone else uh, succeed uh, right. when they're utilizing their chaplain in the right way, um, that's probably the best education. Or actually working with one. Right. And having one on your staff and uh, finally realizing that, oh, man, I, I should include this person yeah. in what I'm doing and what I'm thinking and uh, what my staff is planning for me to make a decision on, there's a, there's a key input there. It's like all the other pieces of that puzzle, the chaplain's part of it. And so I would say, yeah, go go look around, go talk to someone. If you see someone succeeding or having a very good relationship with a chaplain, find out what they're doing right. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> That's one of the things that we've we've endeavored to do um, is to uh, provide, um, you know, be a resource for other agencies yeah. as well. Um, you, you can't be everywhere and do everything. Right. Um, but it is it is nice to know that there are those who have who have asked for assistance and help, uh, who have even asked uh, for, for us to come and do training for their chaplains. Right. Uh, to enhance a pro, uh, an existing program or to maybe to restructure. Um, I wanted to comment or have you comment in the both of you actually on something that may be a little tricky. I want to handle this with, um, with discretion, but you mentioned, um, your chaplains do not carry firearms in yeah. combat. Okay. Sure. So I'm going to refer to this as a dual role chaplaincy where, um, from the firefighter standpoint, um, your fire, your chaplain shows up and he's driving the apparatus or he's busy doing CPR or he's pulling a hose or throwing a ladder, you know, your chaplain shows up and, and, you know, he's got other roles and responsibilities. Uh, well, clearly by not having a firearm, you're going to focus on your role and responsibility as spiritual support. Right. Um, I mean, how do we address that? How do we talk to talk to that issue? Because I have been called into uh, to other communities where, well, we need a chaplain, but ours is busy uh, on the pump or ours is busy venting a roof. W what do you think about all that? From my perspective, it's no different than my safety officer on scene. I don't want him thrown ladders. I don't want him uh, grabbing a hose line. I want him focused on his role as overall safety of that incident. And if he feels as though the incident is larger than what he can manage by himself, I want him to appoint somebody else to help him in that role. But he's got the lead on that, and he can take a more overview of, of that situation. Um, yeah, I've seen that before, and it it just does not seem to work well. I understand the premise that a lot of, of departments look at. It's another body at that point in time. But it's just because I think there's been a lack of, of, um, of training. There's been a lack of understanding of what that role is, but it's no different than if you have, as fire chief, if you grab the nozzle and go in, who's got control of this situation? 
And what is that telling your people? You don't trust them? Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot of things with that that, that I don't like personally. Um, I, want, I want that chaplain, don't just do something, stand there, is the, the phraseology that I've always used with that. I want them watching over my guys because mm -hmm. I can't necessarily watch over them to that same degree. <clears throat> And the longer the chaplain's been with you, the more he's going to understand the personnel, uh, some of the, understand the gravity of that particular incident, whether, you know, because maybe there's a child involved or, or it's a fire, um, whatever. But um, that way they can be watching out as Joe comes out of the fire building and, and, and throws his mask and his hat off, you know, okay, watch him because something obviously either went wrong or it's something tripped to trigger, you never know. It could be as simple as a tricycle outside. He just went in to try to find the child that they say is still in. He comes outside unsuccessfully on his mission at that point, but sees that tricycle, and it's the same tricycle that, that his son or daughter rides. That's an, uh, an emotional and spiritual imprint at that point that you would recognize them because you are taking that role as don't just do something, stand there and observe the, the people working and, and see what might. You can always go up to them later, not right then, but later. And then maybe it's just a hand on the shoulder, you know. Um, it, you'll know. You'll know. Dispatch from Route 7 Command. Man, go ahead. Chaplain at this location. Ten four. Attention, thirty three ninety two. Thirty three ninety two. You're needed at the eight thousand block of Route Seven. Multiple vehicle accident. Please acknowledge. Thirty three ninety two is in route eight thousand block Route Seven. Ten four. In the darkest blackness of human carnage and suffering, police, fire, and EMS intercede on behalf of mankind. God himself reaches out to those who suffer through their hands. Their service is a clear and unmistakable demonstration that God does not abandon people in the storms of life.